Hey, welcome back. In this video, I wanna talk about why you should zig when other people are zagging. Now, I know at the first start, it might sound like, oh, he's just kind of say, you know, be a contrarian. Well, that doesn't have much value if you're just being a contrarian for no reason. Uh, but what I've started learning recently gave me the idea for this video, and I think it's extremely important. And it's why some people do really well and other people never get those same results. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why you should think about zig when other people are zagging and not always following the crowd. Stay tuned. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you a really quick story before I get into it. But in this video, if, if at any point you can go below, click in the, um, we have the little chapter, so you can click that if you want. But I really think the story sets it up well and, and how I got the idea for this video. In that within the past year, I started investing a lot. And when you're investing, a lot of the times you hear a friend say something or uh, you know, someone tells you and you think you should get in because they have an inside guy or, or they, they know something to where they're saying this is gonna be the next thing you have to get in on the ground floor. In. So I started getting into cryptocurrency. I'll probably do a video about that later for some of you. I've been having people asking me questions about that, but I started getting into cryptocurrency and stocks and things like that. And one thing that I learned is that if you are doing anything based off of news, you're too late. But a lot of people actually would invest because they heard on the news that Dogecoin is about to be the next thing or Bitcoin is about to do something or Ethereum or even ones that they've never heard of before. So I've seen a lot of my friends who um, at one point we really never talked about anything and even family members, we never talked about investing, but I started talking with friends and family members and all these folks and hearing that they were into Dogecoin or they were into something but by the time they heard about it, it was really too late. And the same thing happened with Bitcoin is that people were trying to get in at a certain, it was going to like 54,000, then to 60,000 and people were interested in it. And what I started seeing is that when the price starts to go up and people are talking about it on the news, um, they're tweeting about it, what happens is that that's not the point that you wanna buy. Because all the people that already own it and they bought down here and they rode it up to 60,000 and then Elon Musk sends out a tweet and then from that tweet, the price goes down to 30,000. Well, that's where you wanna buy is at that 30,000. But because a lot of folks actually didn't um, have the experience, they really didn't know what they were doing, they were following the crowd. And because they were following the crowd, uh, they got in at the highest point. So they bought high and then the price started to drop. And then they were like, I gotta get out of this thing. And they lost money. Um, I heard about people actually mortgaging uh, their homes and all these just crazy stories you hear about. And it's because they were following the crowd. They were uh, zigging when other people were zigging, but they didn't realize that a lot of these folks were creating um, fear and uncertainty and doubt on purpose so that they would start selling so then they could buy uh, lower. And that's, that's the whole idea behind this video is that that same kind of thing happens in your business. So I want to give you three things to think about in your business, and you can even apply these to your life, but why you should zig when other people are zagging, and it just helps you in so many different areas. Okay, number one, let's talk about how not following the crowd can help you in your business. Now, I told you a little bit about that investing story but it also helped me with my business. Now, when I started my business, everyone was kind of doing the same thing. I started with a marketing company and like most marketing companies, uh, uh, a lot of solopreneurs like myself, you, you usually work with a few contractors if you need to, to kind of help with you know overflow. But in the most part, it's just you as a solopreneur and you might have a small team that's helping you out. But a lot of folks would actually start calling themselves an agency or they would start saying that they're a CEO really before they had all those things. And what would happen is that they started getting into, they would start getting themselves into a position where they really weren't the thing that they were calling themselves. So I knew I was a solopreneur the whole time, which meant that it gave me a certain flexibility in conversations with new clients or new potential clients. I could easily talk to them about my business, my proficiency, my expertise, the contractors I worked with on products, and there was an authenticity and alignment with who I was and what I sold. Now, I know that that wasn't the popular thing at the time because people wanted to have a creative agency or they wanted to have, um, uh, they wanted to seem larger than they were. 
So even on their website, they'd write things like, we help our clients, knowing it was one person, <laughs> but they wanted to sound larger. So what happened is I saw what everyone was doing and I started to hear from business owners that, hey, like you marketers, you make it seem, uh, there's like a lot of hype to what you're doing. You make it seem as if, as if you're bigger and I don't have the trust um, in you already because when you come in, it's, it's just you, it's not some big company. So the first thing for me in my business is that I saw what other people were doing and I tried uh, to kind of look inside, to look at what I actually brought to the table, think differently than other folks in my industry and then move forward that way. And what that allowed me to do is actually grow to grow a business that allowed me to have my same type of lifestyle where I didn't have to grow a team. I didn't have to manage a team. I didn't have to have payroll. I didn't have to do all these other things. I just had to work with my contractors that were professional and I didn't have to do all the other business stuff that I never wanted in the first place. But all the friends that I know that uh, did that in their own business, they actually had to have that headache. And that was one thing that kind of set them, set them behind because they were doing what everyone else was doing instead of doing what was true to them. Okay, number two, how can not following the crowd actually help you with your business marketing? Now this right here is probably the best story for my business ever, is that when I started, um, everyone was selling marketing services and um, it was hard to tell who had been in for a while and who was brand new and um, if people were just great at selling but not actually great at uh, doing the work that they were doing. So a lot of people at that time were sending out mass emails or they were doing ads and they would just say, uh, you know, they would give uh, a client an email or an ad message that would say, hey, I'll bring you 100 new clients every month. How does that sound? And everyone was doing that. And like it was these unreal numbers that they were actually marketing. And many of them had never even done marketing before. So once again, I started to zig when others were zagging. And I said, you know, realistically, most businesses really need um you know, 15, depending on the industry that you're in, but a lot of the ones that I was in is that if they got 15 new leads and they sold three to five of those, I mean, that was like a great month because of how big their packages were, uh, the lifetime value of a client. So I went after clients and I wouldn't promise them the moon. I wouldn't say I'm gonna get you uh, 200 new clients this month or, you know, 100 new prospects. I actually, the first client I got uh, through one of my marketing funnels uh, was in a different state we had never met before but the marketing message that they saw from me was something that the 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 amount of leads I told them I would get them a month was so low uh, was the thing that actually made them book appointment with me because they thought this actually seems believable and I remember because I got on the phone and I said okay well this is exciting you know I'm looking forward to helping you this is who I am this is what I do and this is the value I can bring but I'm curious what actually made you book the appointment with you with me and uh, the person said, it was, it was your message. Your message came across in a way that it wasn't hypey and you didn't promise me something that I didn't think you could do. And you promised something that seemed realistic. And that was one of the best things that I ever learned is that even though everyone else in the marketing, I see it a lot now with people who are coaches or they're selling courses, uh, which are great things. I, I have a coach now, I, I do courses all the time. So those things are great. But now that everyone is doing it, they sell them all the same way because they learn the same strategy. So what does everyone do? A lot of coaches will say, um, get my free strategy session. But that's a really, really, really long um, way to go for a person that doesn't know you to book an hour session with you. So what can a, a coach do before that, before that free strategy session? But most people are starting here. So this would be an opportunity that if you are a coach or if you are doing any type of strategy sessions to actually start thinking about it in a different way. Don't do what everyone else is doing. Because a lot of the times when you do something that everyone else is doing, it could be like that stock marketing um, scenario that when you hear about it, sometimes it can be too late. But as long as you're working with someone that can really help you navigate the changes and the nuances that you need to make. Sometimes those strategies still work, but keep that in mind that it, as you're marketing your business, don't do what everyone does. Don't do everything that Facebook or Instagram or TikTok uh, says that you need to do. Think about your business, what your clients or ideal clients are hearing, and then respond in a way to them. All right, and last, I wanna talk about how 
not following the crowd can actually help you increase your confidence. Now, one of the things I talked about, or the first thing that I talked about was that investing story. Now, now that I have enough experience and I've been seeing how the market goes up and down, up and down, and because I know it's always gonna come down, I always buy when it's down and then you sell when it's high. So because I've actually not done what I've heard in the news or a friend that gets a really cool idea, so I go, <laughs> I go out and spend $500 to buy something, but because I've actually started putting the time in and I've seen that these trends actually happen, it gives me confidence to know that I, I don't have to buy into this FOMO, fear of missing out. And that's a big part of it, is that a lot of people make decisions and they follow the crowd because they don't want to miss out. Who wants to miss out? Nobody wants to miss out. So therefore, we follow the crowd. And that can be the easy thing to do but really try to sit back. Don't just like get so narrowed in your focus that you're looking at what's right in front of you. Take a moment, look back, what are the trends and how can you actually learn from that to know that a trend is usually gonna be something that's on a cycle or it might be around for a short term, but then it's gone. So where can you actually hop in and get a really good benefit that other people are seeing, but the crowd is actually uh, doing the same thing. So how do you stand out that way? So that's gonna be one way that it actually builds your confidence because you start knowing um, what's gonna work. There's marketing um, strategies that I do in my business that if I had to go out and get a client within the next 10 days or 15 days, I know that they would work. So because of that, even if you know no one answered me in the, in the first you know seven to 10 days, I still have confidence in those strategies because those strategies actually got me clients before. Now, I might have to change them a little bit depending on you know what's new with Facebook advertising or Google advertising, um, but other than that, the strategies are gonna be the same. So that's one way that it actually boosts your confidence by doing something different than what the crowd is doing. The second part is that as you're seeing these trends and as you're seeing these patterns, you can actually move faster. So one thing of expertise is being able to be in the same position and see the same thing coming at you over and over and over. Or if you're doing something and it's a lot of repetition, you do the same movement over and over and over. So maybe at the beginning, it actually seems like it's a really hard thing to do. You don't remember where all the parts are, you're trying to figure it out. But after doing it so much, you can see things, you see the patterns, you see the trends, you see the cycles, you see everything faster. And when you can see everything faster, it actually gives you confidence, right? That's why if you're watching any type of sporting event or um, great motivational speaker, they know what they're gonna say. So whenever they're out there and they're speaking to the crowd, they have such confidence because even if someone stands up and joins in to something they're doing, they know where they're going. They know where the next you know, 30 minutes of their speech could go that they can actually be in the moment and make some, uh, make it fun, make it engaging in that moment. So the more that you are actually standing out and pioneering and thinking about owning your thoughts, owning the things that you want and implementing those, it allows you to actually speed up your progress. And once you start speeding up your progress, it then becomes one of those things of, well, it's really not that hard to do. You're just doing the fundamentals over and over and over. And when people look back and ask you questions like, how did you do that? It, it's, it's really easy to say, well, I just did the fundamentals. You know, I just did the things that work. I, I did them over and over and over. But if you're always following the crowd and you never do them yourself, it's actually hard to get those lessons. It's hard to get that experience. So that's what I would like for you to take from this video is that if you see other people doing something, don't just go out and do it. Actually take a moment, see if that's something that really works for your business, it works for who you are. Otherwise, be okay doing something different because there's gonna be a large crowd of people that need your services, that need your products in the way that you are actually gonna reach them. Don't try to do what everyone else does. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. You let me know if you think I left anything out, but this is how I view it when it comes to zigging and zagging and not always following the crowd. Well, thank you so much. Until next time, JB out.